Okay, I want to show how we add the signal on um, a track to put it, upload it to multi-track so that it controls ProPresenter. I'm going to use here Logic Pro X and I'm going to go to File, New and then I'm going to create an audio channel to be able to add our Nothing is Impossible song. That's what I'm going to test with. Here it's under the Downloads folder. I just grab it, drag it on here. So you have to get the MP3 file or whatever. Put it in. On playback, I know that this tempo should be 128, so I'm going to go ahead and move that up. I'm not sure if it will affect it in the end or not, but just for safe, just to make sure. Then I'm going to add another channel. I'm going to say external MIDI, and I'm going to create that, and I'm going to have a MIDI channel here. So uh, first thing I want to, on this MIDI channel, I'm going to right-click, which is a two-finger click on the Mac, and create empty MIDI region. And then I want to, so I can see the whole thing, I'm going to click on this right here. Um, and then I want to extend this all the way to the end. I don't want to loop it like that. See how it has the loop? Because then it'll keep doing this little thing. I don't want to loop it. I want to extend it, which is this little thing right here. And I want to extend it all the way to the end. Looks like, I'm not sure why this didn't go all the way to the end here. So I'm going to make sure it goes all the way to the end. And pull this all the way to the end. Now that it's there, I can go to View and Show Editor. And down here, you're gonna see what looks like a keyboard. And as I move my mouse around on this area, you can see right here this, this uh, key changing. And so this is um, the key signal that's gonna be sent to ProPresenter when we play out on multi-tracks. Now if I open up ProPresenter, and I'm going to look at this now, our song here, Nothing is Impossible. So <clears throat> I probably want to resize this window so that I can be looking at kind of both of them at the same time. And let's see if I can hide this, make it a little bit longer. Okay, now here um, I do want to be able to see uh, a zoomed in. So I'm going to unclick this little area so I can be zoomed in. But here is going to be showing me the whole song all together. So maybe I'll also move this window all the way over here just so that I can see as much as possible on both screens. So we're going to start off here and hit play with the space bar. And turn up the volume, make sure the volume is high. So maybe right here in the beginning, the, when the music starts, maybe I'll go ahead and put in that we want to start at slide number one. So um, maybe right about three here. Actually, maybe it's a little bit before. Let's go to um, two. Boom. So it started right about here. So let's just right about here. Yeah. So let's add right here slide number one. So I'm going to find here. Um, no, it's not showing me because it's too small. So G negative one. So let's go down here. Scroll all the way down and find A, B, C, D, F, G negative one right here. And right here, then I will right click again and hit create note. Now I created a note here, it's G negative one, and the velocity is at one. So that means the slide number one is gonna be selected right then. So when I hit play here, boom, that's right when the first slide is gonna appear. And so now it's gonna keep going. And let's go to the first slide, when the first slide is gonna happen. So right here, Bukura. So right here, before Bukura, we want to already put up the slide right here. So let's go to G negative one, hit create note. And this one now, as you can see here on our slide, it's gonna version start on verse three. So let's put that, so we're clicked on here, and we put this to velocity three. Now, G negative one, velocity three, as you can see there. So that will select slide number three. Now this is kind of hard to use with the mouse. So what's cool though, is that for the next slide, what I can do and I find out where it's gonna be, let's say it's um, Kureta and then Actually right about the end here. Kureta, right about here. I want to add the next one. Now I could right click and do it all again, but since my last thing is already selected, I can just um, hit Command C to copy and then hit Command V to paste it. And so right now I just pasted it where my little cursor was 
And because velocity was the last thing I edited, I can hit the equal button on my keyboard to make it go up, equal or minus. On the Japanese keyboard, it's the he and, uh, and the ho. Ho and he. He goes up and ho goes down. So I can go he up and then hit space. So right about here, I'm already going to go ahead and add it because I don't want to. Uh, so I'm going to hit control copy again to select because it's the last one selected. Copy, paste again. So now and then I just put the he. It's like the next one. Yeah, so let's just reverse here a little bit. Okay, right here already, I'm going to hit Control command c Command v and put the he. And I just keep, and then make sure that's a good spot. Next slide. So it's, you just have to kind of imagine the slides changing in time and try to get it usually a good amount before the the next slide is going to turn is going to come and then zooming in zooming out you can use your two finger swipe now on the keys here or you can use here to kind of zoom in and zoom out i like to leave it a little zoomed in so that i can kind of see about how big it is and if i want to select it and move it over any way that i want i can move it just a little bit over to the left or to the right and i just keep doing that until the end once that's done um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, save this and I'm going to save it as nothing is impossible. I don't actually need to save this whole project. What I could just do is go to file and then export and then export this selection as a MIDI file. So if I export that, I said nothing is impossible and I'm just going to type in MIDI here just to make it extra clear even though the file will already be obvious that it's MIDI. I go here to music, um, logic. And you will see here, nothing is impossible, MIDI file. After that, I can just upload it into to the multi-tracks, and it works amazing. So I hope this helps uh, other people that are using Logic, and especially our church, to be able to do this from home and get this all ready before church service so that uh, we can actually test it beforehand and make any last-minute changes that we need. Thanks, guys. God bless you guys. Thanks for helping.